Okay, so let's look at how to do batch exporting when the input is um, an image. So with any of these models, um, the, the input type sort of depends on how the export is going to work. Um, so in this case, we're just going to look at big GAN. Um, actually, we're going to look at big, big by GAN, sorry, um, because that is where you give it an image, and then with the image, it exports out to uh, the, the, the big GAN uh, equivalent. So let's add this to our new workspace. Um, now, the nice thing about exports is you don't need to start your model, you don't need to run it or anything. Um, all you're going to come, do is come over here and hit export. Um, so you hit export, you will see that you have a, an option here of uh, your inputs, which go here. Um, so you do, for this particular model, you do really want a bunch of import, imports, right? Since it only is one to one, it's one, in, one image in and one image out. Um, in this case, you need multiple images uh, for this to really sort of save you time. Otherwise, you could just run them one by one. Um, so let's look at how to actually bring in some images. Um, so the first thing is you can click browse. So if you have uploaded images, um, let's say for training or for um, something else, you can import those or you can use those same data sets that have been uploaded to Runway's system uh, here. So um, let's actually look at just, let me see if I have a good data set here of images. Um, let me just go, we'll go up and use these plant detection images. So there's 494 images here. Um, I can upload this um, and you can actually go through and you can look at, I, maybe you, can't look at all 484, but I'll show you a sample of them. Um, a nice thing that does exist in this feature is the preview output. So you can just hit preview output. And let's see what it does when we get a export for preview. Cool, so here's one image. Um, they give you one sample image as the option, right? So basically what you're seeing here is uh, this image has been sent to the uh, big bigam model and what it outputs is this. You can sort of like scroll over. I mean, I think what's sort of interesting here is uh, I don't really see uh, how they're that similar, although what might actually be happening here is it might actually be cropping in on this. Um, so this is one of those cases where I might want to play with big GAN, the big BIGAN model a little bit more before doing a batch export. But in this case, let's just go ahead and do a batch export from this. So there are 494 images in this data set. Let's go back to our inputs. Um, you can see a, a sample of them here. Um, on the left-hand side here is we have images or we have video. So uh, because these are not like frames um, from a uh, video, I don't want to use video uh, for this particular example. Um, so we're going to stick with images. The output format will be PNG. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, one thing to note is you want to check on the estimated cost. Um, it says it's going to cost me 50 cents. That seems pretty low for 500 images, but um, that seems great. Like, why not go ahead and use that then? Um, you know, if you were to do these one by one by one inside a runway, which charges what, five cents a minute, um, it would cost you way more than that. So there is a huge advantage to using batch export. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and X out of this, and we're just going to hit export 494 images. So uh, when you click that, you're just going to, it's going to start up a process. It actually closes your model and sends you to the exports tab, which is here, and you'll see this is now running. Um, so while this is running, because it's going to take a little bit of time, let's go back over to my workspace and let's do another export. So this time we're going to export, and this time we're going to do a video. So um, I'm actually just going to browse, and I'm going to upload a file. Um, I'm actually just going to upload this image. So this is a video that I've posted recently on my Instagram account. I'm just going to place, use this. Now what's cool about this, um, which I think is really, really interesting, is if you upload a video, um, it will split it into all the individual frames for you, so then you can process this, right? So the nice thing is you might actually want to separate these out as images, in which case you could do that. Um, and this is going to spit out a sequence of images all using these frames. The other option is to use it as a video and is going to convert it immediately to a video. So again, um, you know, with these video production, you will lose a little bit of compression or image quality using a, a codec. So if you really want the highest quality images possible, which you don't really think you care about for big by gang, because I think it produces 256 by 256 pixel images, um, you could do image output and then like you know, do whatever you wanted with a, with a higher compression, like in After Effects or something. In this case, we're just going to export as video. You can set your frame rate. Um, there's output or M oh, so there is an MOV. Um, you could export as an MOV, although I don't. With the codec still being H.264, I think there's still going to be compression. So um, anyway, there's all this other stuff to think about here. Um, so there's no audio in my video. I'm just going to turn this off. Um, here again, you can estimate the cost, and you'll see. Oddly enough, this is 200 frames and it's saying the cost about the same. So one thing to note with the cost estimator in Runway is it is just an estimate. 
Um, in general, I find it's fairly accurate, but like it is at best a range. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you only have 25 cents left in your account, uh, maybe it's not worth like messing with this until you get a little bit more money in there. So just be aware that it is just an estimate. Um, so let's go ahead and run this one now um, with an export video. And you'll see that now we have two models running. Um, so these are running in the background. Um, it's just processing these things for us um, and we'll see how it goes. So um, it actually looks like this one's already running, which is interesting. This one is still um, getting set up. So interestingly enough, this one's faster and this one's slower. Um, what I'm going to show you here is uh, this is an example of one that I've already run. Um, and you, so this already completed. This was literally that, the same video that I sent through Big Bygan. Um, so you can download it, um, choose where you want it to go. And let's just replace that. And when it's done, you can just hit open and it's going to open a video. So here we go. This is our video. Now, one thing you will notice is that um, the video I gave it was pretty fluid and, and pretty simple or like uh, was all the same thing. What I got out of it is a video that is very like flickery, right? Like there's no, uh, it doesn't remember the image that came before it. And that's the downside of using something like a video frames in Big Bygan, right? Big Bygan only takes one image at a time. It knows nothing about the previous images. So you get back this like very flickery thing, which is still a cool effect, but it is not uh, what you might have expected to get back. You might have expected to get back the same dog shape sort of morphing, um, but that's not how uh, the big bygan model will work in this case. So just be aware of uh, that sometimes what you think you're getting in out of a video will not be what you're getting out uh, with a video. Um, yeah, so just be aware of those things. Um, these are probably going to take a little bit longer just to process, um, so I won't uh, sit around and wait for us, uh, but when they are done, you'll do the same process of exporting these um, to somewhere on your desktop, downloading them, checking them out. Uh, so that is batch export with an input image. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.